Hello and welcome to another video. I usually don't like to do these drama sort of videos, but I figured this one affected me personally and I feel pretty strongly about it. So here we are. Today we're going to be talking about Diffgram. Uh, they are some sort of machine learning AI startup. I'm not really sure. I've never used their product and I've never interacted with them. Uh, but recently they have been scraping email addresses from GitHub from uh, I'm not even sure which repositories. I do know that they are scraping their competitors because that's where they got my email address from. Um, but they've been scraping email addresses and then sending marketing spam to a bunch of different Python developers. And I wanted to walk you through some of the evidence here on why this is messed up and some minor mitigations that you can take to avoid the spam. Uh, but first, I wanted to start with the GitHub acceptable use policy. And this outlines what companies can and can do, as well as users can and can do on their platform. And there's an important note in the information usage restrictions, which uh, talks about scraping and that there's acceptable use for researchers uh, to do you know, any public information about that. Uh, but it explicitly talks about a exclusion here, which is that you can't use information from the service, whether scraped, collected through our API, or obtained otherwise, for spamming purposes, including for the purpose of sending unsolicited emails, et cetera, et cetera, marketing, blah, blah, blah. You can't use get email addresses to spam. That's essentially what GitHub's acceptable use policy is stating here. Uh, but Diffgram is doing exactly that. They're scraping the email address out of commit information and then sending marketing spam. Uh, and it gets worse than that. When uh, called out in their issue tracker, uh, which I and many others have done, this this is actually a pretty old tweet. This is back from December. Uh, when called out in their issue tracker, they respond by deleting the issue, uh, which is, <laughs> I didn't even know you could delete issues on GitHub, but I guess I know now. And then blocking the user from the organization. Let's see here, here's my block message. I've been blocked from Diffgram, oh no. God forbid I would ever want to use their product. Um, but they're, they're, they're actively censoring people here. And actually, I've had to dig through archive.org to even find some of these issues because they're just gone. There's no way to get them from the GitHub API. If you try and access them directly, you get this, the issue has been deleted message. Uh, and they're just gone. Uh, this has affected a lot of people. And a lot of people have gone to the issue tracker to complain about this, about you know, the constant spam email addresses. And even mentioning GitHub's acceptable use policy and you know, showing the email. The emails themselves contain tracking links. So they, they know whether you're viewing them. They know whether you're clicking on them. Uh, and you know, they're, they're <laughs> unsolicited spam. They do have an unsubscribe link, which seems to work. Uh, but it also you know, records a message in their database that that email address is legitimate. So still um, a little bit shady there. Here's one, one example of these. Uh, another example uh, that was posted you know, <laughs> pretty recently. Um, but uh, you know, many people have noticed this. One thing that we also, uh, oh, and here's one more. Got one more, just to get three of them. Uh, one thing that we've also noticed about this is GitHub by default, you can only delete issues. So if you create a pull request, in theory, it is not deletable. Uh, we tried this out and found that even that is wrong. Uh, <laughs> this is also fished out of archive.org. Uh, we created a pull request. It didn't have this title originally. I'll show you what the original title was in a second because I did happen to get a screen grab before it's deleted. Um, but pull requests aren't deletable without GitHub admins stepping in and deleting them. Um, in this particular case, uh, the person confirmed that this only could come from GitHub because they only use that email address for their commit logs and you know, mark everything as spam in that case. Uh, this is actually <laughs> the screenshot that I was able to take during my uh, Twitch stream where uh, you can see the maintainer of the repository changing the title from stop spamming to stop spamming to dash 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 and then locking it as spam, which a <laughs> you know, little, little bit of irony here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and, and this is the individual that uh, presumably they're like CTO or something of Diffram. I don't actually know, uh, but they're involved in the, in the tech of this. Uh, and so you know, to me, this is pretty cut and dry that don't spam, 
Don't scrape email addresses from GitHub. <laughs> and don't violate GitHub's acceptable use policy. Unfortunately, GitHub hasn't really done anything about this. Uh, neither has SendGrid, the email provider for Diffgram, or like, you know, <laughs> any, any parties in all. Diffgram hasn't changed their uh, approach here either. So I want to show you a few ways that you can uh, work around this. Now, I'm not in any way saying that you know, this is this is the user's fault for, oh yeah, you should have just expected because your email is public that people can spam it. No, it, spam isn't acceptable. But you can protect yourselves in a couple of ways. Unfortunately, you can't retroactively protect yourself. So if you've committed before, your email is out there and there's not really much you can do about it because, I mean, you could rebase all of your history, but you really can't do that at scale. Uh, and the way to do that is to go to your profile settings and adjust your email settings. So mine is set up public and I do this intentionally because I think it's important for people to be able to communicate with me directly about open source stuff when it is important and you know when an issue tracker isn't an appropriate means. You know, security things or you know, discussions about stuff or you know, sometimes people forward me interesting things. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, and, and you know, you can see that I, I have made a conscious decision to keep mine public, uh, you can check this box that is keep my email address private. Now, this will only change the GitHub API responses. You'll have to take some additional measures to uh, work around this. So the, the first thing that you'll want to do is copy this email address. This is a placeholder email address that GitHub will use for your account. It's automatically associated with your account, so you don't have to do anything special to make it show up with your, you know, your little avatar icon when you make commits and stuff. Uh, but you will need to adjust your git config here. And the primary thing that you'll have to do is adjust your email inside your commits to this other email here. So then, when you make a commit in a repo, Grab this one here, allow empty, just some commit here. Of course, we have to install the git hooks. <laughs> I should have, I should have picked a, I should have just used an empty repo. Hopefully it doesn't take a few minutes. I guess we could just use an empty repo. Uh, Okay, when you make a commit here, you'll see that it, it'll use this uh, no reply email address. I believe there's also a check, marks here, a check mark here to uh, make a GitHub forbid pushes that use a different email address. That way you can make sure you don't accidentally slip through the old email address. Um, this allows you to basically prevent your email from showing up. But any old commit will still contain your original email address, and so there's not really much you can do about that. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to show, I forgot to show earlier, is I went through all of the issues on Diffgram to see just how many have been reported and deleted, and uh, there are 34 that I was able to detect. There were seven that uh, may or may not have been deleted, I'm not sure, but <laughs> there's, there's been quite a few that have, have gone through this process. Anyway, I uh, wanted to bring this light to light. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.